From stories across the globe to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharif Tahir. A very good evening indeed. I'm Charit Mulpuraraji. And now let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news. Final rides of the third COVID-19 diseased victim was observed. Close 2,500 residents in the same flat as the diseased victim have been quarantined. The Prime Minister emphasizes that all should work together in accordance to the instructions directed by health sector. The government decides to refrain from importing any non-essential product. The program to pay the pensions is successful. Another two suspects have been arrested over the Easter Sunday attack. The Philippine President orders to shoot those who have failed to comply with the quarantining persons in the country. We move on to those and other stories in detail now. A look at local news first. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha says that all should work together in overcoming the challenge posed before the country at present in accordance to the instructions directed by health sections without any political, racial or religious discrimination. The Prime Minister made these remarks at a meeting of all party representatives held at the Temple Trees today. Pointing out that the government has acted in accordance to the instructions directed by the medical specialists at all times, the Prime Minister said that the curfew was also imposed under the instructions of the defence and health sectors. The Prime Minister emphasised that at a period where all would experience social and religious inconveniences, the duty of the nation would be to be considerate over the lives of the people while enduring these difficulties. Head of the Presidential Task Force, Vassar Rajapaksha, explained the steps taken by the government to maintain the daily life of the people in accordance to the health instructions. Head of the Presidential Task Force for Essential Services, Vassar Rajapaksha said that at first they should have created the environment for the people to purchase goods with the funds they had in hand. He said that the distribution of commodities for the public has been improved than the previous week amid several difficulties. He said that the opportunity should be facilitated for the people to obtain the funds in banks who had no money in hand. He said that the President and the Cabinet of Ministers had decided to declare banking services as an essential service and open all banks in the country. He added that the government, after discussing with the President and the Prime Minister, took measures to provide a massive relief for them. He said that 5.3 million people will receive the benefits of the extended allowances. He added that the rural economy should not be hindered and continue to support the grassroots levels. He also said that necessary facilities have been granted for the farmer and fisheries communities to proceed with their activities without a hindrance. He added that all relevant authorities in the country, from the provincial governors to grammar seva officers, to carry out the operations in a productive and efficient manner. The political representatives took part in the meeting, appreciated the steps taken by the government to prevent the spread of the coronavirus and would direct their assistance to accomplish these measures. Former President Matri Palasirisena, former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, former Speaker Karuja Surya, former opposition leader Sadid Premadasa, the party leaders and representatives of many sectors including Defence and Health were present at the meeting. And meanwhile, the balance of the COVID-19 healthcare and social security fund has surpassed 314 million rupees. The presidential secretary has requested to make the donations with direct deposits of cash, checks or through a recognized payment method without directing the funds to any individual or organization. The Presidential Secretariat has informed the several reports have been received of fund collecting incidents related to COVID-19 healthcare and social security fund. The Secretary to the President has requested the masses to lodge complaints with the closest police station over such fraudulent activities. More information can be obtained by contacting Director General Administration KB Egodavala through 0112-354479 or 0112-354-354. 
the government has directed the national towards a health quarantine. The distribution of essential commodities, including food and medicine, has been carried out under the instructions and regulations of the Health Authorities and Election Commission. Telecom engineers Binovel and Front and Independent Engineers Association of the Ceylon Electricity Board have contributed 1 billion rupees each to the fund. Cargill Ceylon PLC has donated 50 million rupees for the fund. The donations can be made to the special account 85737373 at the corporate branch of the Bank of Ceylon. Local and foreign donations have been made their contributions to the fund. The donations made to the fund have been exempted from taxes and foreign exchange. In the meantime, the final rites of the third deceased COVID-19 victim in the country was observed today. It was held at the Udumula Cremation in Muleriava. A protest was carried out by the residents of the area after learning that the cremation of the deceased victims has been observed at the cemetery. <laughs> Steps were taken to proceed with the final rise of the deceased victim after two public health officers had explained them over the procedures. Public Health Officer Nalin Fonseca said that the final rites of the deceased victim will be carried out in a standardized crematorium. He said that the virus is destroyed at a temperature of 30 to 35 Celsius and the temperature of the crematorium is at 1,200 Celsius. He said that these measures have been taken in accordance to the protective regulations and procedures. DIG Abdit Rohana said that the final rites of the deceased victims of COVID-19 should be carried out urgently. He said that under the quarantine regulations necessary legal actions will be taken against those who gather around the cemetery. Mema COVID Rogan, Yamkisi Pudgale Ku Miyagia Vita, Emma Miyagia Pudgaleage, Adahani Sudukarnastani, Evagi Mema Miyagia Pudgaleage, Dehe Ragadiana Pradeshia, Mevani Marania, Ita Ikmanin Avasan Kati Sudukaran Noni, Evagi Ma Janata Vekras Women Walakin Noni, Enisa, Abivishan Madarundeno. Minidriedi, Iveni Tatuanidi, Janata, Yamaka Rekata, Anavashalis Rasinonang, Evagema, Paradiba Sitinonang, Unta Vruduat, Niroda and Ritina at the Katitukurno. Mr. Pavit Ravanyaraji said that the grandson and the son in law of the deceased victim has been identified as COVID 19 patients. She said that not only the deceased victim had many efforts to be treated for the disease, but he had also endangered the lives of his family members. She requested the public to act in a responsible manner and fulfill their duties as the citizens of the country in preventing the spread of the disease. <laughs> Mirate Janata Waging Api Lahitino, Raja Rajiak Vidyata, Waga Kimaking Rate Janata, Venu and Hitala Kate to Karnava, Nam, Rate Janata, Vidyata, Obey Yutukama Toba, Itukala Yutui. The final rites was observed with the medication of the Judicial Medical Officer, Medical Health Officer and Public Health Officers. The third deceased victim has been identified as a 73-year-old resident in Maradana, Colombo. He was receiving treatments at the Sri Javadanapura Hospital and after he was diagnosed with coronavirus, he was transferred to the IDH. Director General of the Health Services, Dr. Anil Jasinga said, that the deceased victim was suffering from diabetes, high blood pressure and a terminal kidney failure. Meanwhile, close to 2,000 residents residing in a housing complex in Imamul Arus Road
Meanwhile, close to 2,000 residents residing in a housing complex in Imamul Arus Road in Maradana have been quarantined today. They have been advised to avoid movement in and out of the flat, and another 300 persons have been directed to the Punani Quarantine Center. The total death tally in the country was increased to three with the death reported yesterday. The total number of confirmed coronavirus cases has been increased to 151 with the recording of three more patients today. Meanwhile, 21 persons have already left the hospitals after complete recovery and 126 patients are currently being treated for the disease. Medical observations have been carried out over another 251 persons. Minister Ramesh Patirin has said that they can identify a large number of patients with COVID-19 after examining the suspicious areas and through random checks. He said that the public should not fear the virus as the health authorities have the ability to treat the disease. With the confirmation of three members of the same family had been infected with the disease in Atalugama Bandaragama, the security measures imposed in the areas have been further tightened. Another five suspicious cases have been admitted to Nagoda Hospital in the last 24 hours. Strict health protective measures were undertaken when providing essential goods for the residents in the area. Several coronavirus infected cases have been identified from Beruola area. Therefore, 226 persons in Pandila, Maratalavatta, Karangagoda, Akkaragoda areas have been directed to quarantine centers. The area has been directed under the strict protection of the Sri Lanka Army and the police at present. The inward and outward movement in Akuruna area in Kandy has continued to be suspended after identifying a corona infected person in the area. The distribution of essential goods for the residents was carried out by the Candy Traders Association. The entry to the Kavadayan Kulam in Puttalam district has been completely prohibited after identifying a COVID-19 patient in the area. 80 persons have been directed to the quarantine center in Zahira College in Puttalam. And the government has taken measures to provide pensions tomorrow and the 6th of this month. The police headquarters have said that all senior citizens could present their pension years identification as curfew permits. Director General of Pensions Department Jagat Dai has said that the pension payments are worth 18 million. 18,020 million brother rupees for 645,179 pensioners for the month have been initiated successfully. He said that the program to deliver the pension through the postal department has also been initiated successfully. Accordingly, many have visited cities across the country to obtain their pensions today. Sri Lanka Army took steps to provide transportation facilities for those who are in need to collect their pension, covering island-wide. Under the program to deliver the pensions to doorsteps, distribution of pensions through post offices was commenced today in several districts. Postmaster General Ranjita Ratna said that the pensioners are not required to visit the relevant post offices using transportation facilities provided by the government and if the pensions have not been delivered to their residences before April 4th, they must contact the postmaster of the relevant post office on this regard. In parallel to the distribution of pensions, the government has permitted to open all pharmacies in the island on relevant days. The government has taken steps to provide all required medicines without a shortage in a convenient manner for the pensioners. 
The program to distribute required medicine to the residences of the patient receiving treatments from medical clinics has also been initiated continuously without a hindrance. The program has been initiated as a special collaboration between the health sector and the post offices. In the meantime, as global coronavirus numbers approached 1 million detected infections and 50,000 deaths, the measures taken have yet to slow the pace of the pathogen spread in the most countries. The outbreak has continued to hit hard on the United States, Italy, France and Spain, while elsewhere governments are battling to maintain earlier successes in the fight against the novel coronavirus, desiring to resume normal business operations against the risk of triggering new cases. The COVID-19 pandemic has spread to 203 countries and territories around the world and two international conveyances infecting 950,713 people and killing 48,311 as of today. Noting a near exponential growth of the new COVID-19 cases over the past five weeks around the world, Director General of World Health Organization Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus said the death toll has more than doubled in the past week. The United States has reported the most cases with 215,344 infections, reporting over 26,000 new cases with the last 24 hours. A total death toll of 5,112 has been reported from the USA thus far. Nearly 2,400 people have died in New York, New Jersey and Connecticut, half the national total. The coronavirus pandemic has claimed 13,155 lives in lockdown to it in Italy as of today, with the cumulative total number reaching 110,574. Overall, the increase in the number of people hospitalized and those dead was slowing down in Italy, according to Italian authorities. In Spain, the total number of COVID-19 cases has climbed to 104,118, while the total death toll of COVID-19 in the country had risen to 9,387. Madrid continued to be the worst affected part in the country. Confirmed COVID-19 cases in Germany increased by 6,173 within one day to 77,981. The total number of deaths has increased 931 in the country. The cumulative number of coronavirus cases in France has reached 56,989 with the death toll at 4,032. Iran has reported 2,988 new COVID-19 cases, raising the total number of cases to 47,593 in the country, with a total death toll at 3,036. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani recently announced the extension of social distancing plan for another week. In Britain, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases reached 22,000, or rather 29,474 as of today, an increase of more than 4,000 cases in 24 hours. The death toll of the virus in the country hit 2,352. Meanwhile, India has recorded 2,032 confirmed cases of corona infections, while the total death tally in the country has escalated to 58 thus far. And meanwhile, COVID-19 pandemic is the most challenging crisis we have faced in the Second World War, said the United Nations chief recently. The Secretary General of the United Nations issued a stark warning over the prevailing global pandemic situation while speaking in a virtual news conference from New York on last Tuesday. We must respond decisively. The Secretary General of the United Nations issued a stark warning about the threat of the coronavirus outbreak saying it's the biggest test the world has faced since the UN was formed after World War II. It is a combination, on one hand, uh, of uh, a disease that represents a threat to everybody in the world, and second, because it has, have, it has an economic impact that will bring a recession, a recession that probably has no parallel in the recent past. The combination of the two facts and the risk that it contributes to uh, enhance instability, to enhance unrest and enhanced conflict are things that make us believe that this is indeed the most challenging crisis we have faced since uh, the Second World War. Speaking in a virtual news conference from New York, UN Chief Antonio Guterres said he was particularly concerned for Africa and urged developed countries to do more for those that are less prepared. Otherwise, we face the nightmare of the disease spreading like wildfire 
in the global south with millions of death and the prospect of the disease re-emerging where it was previously suppressed. Let us remember that we are only as strong as the weakest health system in our interconnected world. Guterres made the call to action late Tuesday as the UN released a report warning that COVID-19 could potentially have dire long-term effects on countries and the global economy. He also said the crisis must lead to a different social economic order, one that is more equal, inclusive and sustainable. In the meantime, in Japan, has set ban entry to foreigners from 73 countries and asked everyone arriving from abroad to quarantine themselves for two weeks as it struggles to contain the coronavirus. In Japan, 2,384 confirmed cases have been recorded with a total death tally of 57 thus far. Japan will ban entry of foreigners from 73 countries and ask everyone arriving from abroad to quarantine for two weeks, the latest measure in its struggle to contain the coronavirus. Medical experts advising the government say the rapid spread of contagion is severely straining hospitals in the capital Tokyo, in Osaka and some other prefectures. Japan's chief cabinet secretary told reporters on Wednesday that now is a very important time to avoid a rapid increase in infections, but admitted the country remains on the brink. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is facing growing public calls to declare a state of emergency that would give local governors greater clout to tell residents to stay home. Many other countries hit by the pandemic have imposed legally binding lockdowns with serious penalties for violators. Japan had confirmed 2,362 domestically transmitted cases of the coronavirus and 67 deaths as of Wednesday, according to public broadcaster NHK. Relatively small tallies compared with those of the United States, China and Europe. But Tokyo has seen the biggest jump in cases, with another 66 on Wednesday for a total of 587, adding to pressure on the government to take more drastic measures. And meanwhile, former next week Australians will be forced to wear a face mask when they do their shopping, despite the World Health Organization being spectacle of the benefits. This move has been made as the total number of confirmed cases in the country has escalated to 10,892 with 158 deaths. Shoppers in Austria will be required by law to wear a face mask while buying their groceries from next week. On Wednesday, they are being handed out for free to largely compliant shoppers. It's the latest measure here in the fight against coronavirus. Chancellor Sebastian Kurz said that while masks won't protect those wearing them, it will help stop infected people from spreading the disease. But not everyone here is convinced. I think that the masks are coming too late, says this woman. This should probably have been introduced from the start, and maybe we would be further ahead now, and it wouldn't take so long. The World Health Organization is also skeptical about the widespread wearing of masks. Austria borders Italy, the hardest hit country in the world. But Austria moved faster than its neighbor to shut down schools, bars and restaurants. And its death toll remains relatively low, at a little over 140. In Spain, the story could not be more different. On Wednesday, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases there passed the 100,000 mark, as it recorded its biggest one-day death toll from the outbreak. A record 864 people lost their lives over the last 24 hours, taking the country's death toll to 9,053. In the meantime, whilst most European countries have sought into lockdown, Sweden has allowed restaurants, bars and schools to stay open, simply asking citizens to observe social distancing. The country has reported 4,947 cases of infections thus far, with 239 deaths. Crowded streets and children playing outdoors. Unusual scenes in these strange times. But Sweden is going it alone, one of the last European countries to avoid a lockdown. It's urging citizens to stay at home if they feel ill, but allowing bars and restaurants to stay open. Customers are told to observe social distancing. Now they have to be seated and served at a table. 
Children up to late secondary level are still going to school too, because they're said to be less susceptible to the virus and to reduce social and economic disruption. Other countries reason that kids can still spread it to others who may be more vulnerable. Sweden, a country of 10 million people, has had about 4,500 confirmed cases and at least 180 deaths. It's setting up a temporary hospital and warning of a lack of staff and safety equipment. And it's ramping up other measures. The government said Wednesday it would increase testing, with an initial focus on health workers and others in key jobs. And that it would ban visits to old people's homes. That's several weeks behind most other European countries. There are signs of dissent, though. A group of senior healthcare officials has written to the government, calling for tougher measures. And while Sweden's officially staying open for business, many customers are choosing to stay away, prompting the centre-left government to offer loan guarantees and other help to support struggling businesses. And now from Australia to Philippines, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has said yesterday that he would not hesitate to have his shoulders, uh, soldiers shoot dead those who violate coronavirus lockdown measures. Shoot them dead. That's the order Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte gave his military on Wednesday to punish those who violate coronavirus lockdown measures. His televised comments came after media reports of a disturbance in the capital Manila on Wednesday, where residents were protesting about government food aid. The city has been under lockdown since March 15th. Any troubles or gunfights, killings, I will not hesitate to order my soldiers to shoot you. I will not hesitate to order the police to arrest and detain you. And if you're detained, I'll leave it to you how to get your own food. Duterte has been staunchly criticized by activists for his aggressive rhetoric, which they say invites violence and vigilantism. During the country's war on drugs, police and mystery gunmen killed thousands of people and defended their actions as lawful. On Thursday, however, the national police chief said police understood that Duterte was merely demonstrating the seriousness of the situation in his most recent address and that no one would be shot. The Philippines has reported over 2,000 virus cases, with new infections now in the hundreds every day. Moving on to most stories, in the meantime, in Australia, the total number of confirmed cases has increased to 5,137, with over 25 deaths in the country. Meanwhile, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced a subsidy for child care centres today, part of the country's ongoing bid to keep businesses going during the coronavirus pandemic. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced on Thursday free child care for six months, part of a bid to keep businesses going during the coronavirus pandemic. Is we'll be ensuring for those parents who are still in that position where they are needing that child care, it will be free. And we'll be putting in place support arrangements uh, to the child care facilities, some 13,000 of them, to ensure that they'll be able to remain open and be there for those parents to ensure that they can do what they need to do each day. Child care centres have lost significant business in recent weeks, as thousands of Australians have been working from home. The child care subsidy adds to a growing list of support packages worth over $100 billion as the government attempts to hibernate the Australian economy for the time being. Australia has ordered the shutdown of businesses across the country to stop the virus's spread. Morrison added that Australians should be prepared to live with these changes for months. I really want Australians to understand that we need to be in this for that haul. It will be months. We need to make changes that we can live with and that we can implement day after day, week after week, month after month. State officials say these efforts are paying off. The country's daily infection rate has dropped to single digits from almost 30 percent just two weeks ago. In the meantime, in Sri Lanka, the government has decided to suspend the importation of non-essential commodities into the country due to the spread of the coronavirus. Meanwhile, a special island-wide local agri-based program titled Saubagya set to be initiated through the Ministry of Agriculture on the 9th of April. These remarks were made during the media briefing held to announce the cabinet decisions. 
Co-Cabinet spokesman Minister Bandula Gunawardhan has said that the President has proposed the World Health Organization heads to pursue with the leading financial institutions to provide debt moratorium or debt reprofiling facilities for vulnerable developing nations due to the present situation. He said that the President has carried out e-discussions with the leaders of the SARC region. He also said that a discussion was held during the Cabinet meeting over the proposal to convene a summit of World Economic Specialists similar to Benthood Summit during World War II to resolve the issues pertaining to the countries due to the prevailing global pandemic situation. Co-Cabinet spokesman Minister Ramesh Patirin has said that Minister Chamal Rajapaksha proposed to initiate a special program to ensure food security of the nation. He said that a special island-wide program titled Salvagia is set to be initiated through the Ministry of Agriculture on the 9th of April. He said that the government said to encourage and assist initiating home gardening, joint farmhouses and small and large-scale agricultural projects. He added that necessary seeds, saplings and other necessary requirements will be provided through the Ministry of Agriculture. The minister said that the government expects to promote agri-crops including maize, green grams, undu, kollu, soya, kavpi, as well as kurakan, big onions, red onion, potatoes, turmeric and green chilies and utilize large amounts of unused lands for the cultivation purposes under the agri program. He said that the cabinet has decided to provide the necessary coverage to initiate the crop protection program and to purchase the products for a guaranteed price rate under the special presidential security fund presented by the president. He said that the government has decided to limit and suspend the importation of non-essential products apart from essential pharmaceuticals and fuel. He said that these proposals will be initiated with the aim to initiate a strong local agriculture and many strong local industries in the country. And meanwhile, the government has said that the relief package introduced by the president to provide reliefs for more than 4 million state employees and persons with a steady, without a steady income has been implemented. An allowance of 5,000 rupees will be provided to a vast majority under the new program. The government has initiated advance payment of 10,000 rupees for more than 1.7 million Samurthi beneficiaries in the country and 200,000 community based Samurthi association members. Steps have been taken to extend a payment of 5,000 rupees through Samurthi community based banks under the first phase. Director General of Samurthi Bandula Tilakasiri has said that the allowance has been distributed to 1.2 million Samurthi beneficiaries in the country thus far. 600,000 senior citizens have been identified as poverty-ridden persons among the 3.1 million senior citizens in the country. An allowance worth 2,000 rupees had already been extended to 416,667 senior citizens about 70 years of age. In addition, 142,345 senior citizens have also been enlisted. 5,000 rupees worth allowance has been granted for more than 150,000 disabled persons and patients with kidney diseases. The pensions worth 5,000 rupees related this month for 165,000 persons eligible for farmer and fisheries pensions will be also been paid. Pregnant mothers have been permitted to use the pregnancy identity as a curfew permit to attend maternity clinics. 12,000 children in rehabilitation centers have been provided with necessary facilities through the provincial commissioners. Two more suspects have been taken into arrest over the Easter Sunday attacks. Police media spokesman SP Jali Senaratna made these remarks in a media briefing today. Police media spokesman SP Jalia Senaratna said that they were able to apprehend the suspect who facilitated a bomber to carry the bomb to the Zion Church in Bataclaw recently. He said that two more suspects were taken into custody from the investigations carried out after the initial arrest. He said that one of the suspects was taken into custody from Gotatua area. He also said that the investigations have revealed that this suspect had coordinated and facilitated the bomber to carry the bomb to the Cinnamon Grand Hotel. He also said that the other suspect was arrested from Attakule area. 
Yet added that the investigations have revealed that this suspect has provided facilities to the bomber of St. Anthony's Church in Kochikade. He said that the further investigations have been commenced to arrest several suspects in future. He also said that they expect to conclude the investigation at the earliest and reveal the figures behind the series of bomb attacks on the Easter Sunday day. And meanwhile, 2,308 persons have left the quarantine centers operated under the tri forces after successfully completing the 14-day quarantine process thus far. This includes 31 foreign nationals from 15 foreign countries. 187 persons left the centers today after completing the quarantine process. A batch of 45 persons left the quarantine center established at Pampadu's Sri Lanka Army Camp in Vaunia this morning. They were residents from Palanaru, Putulam and Kuragala areas. Only 15 persons are remaining at the quarantine center under Sri Lanka Army in Vaunia. A batch of 25 persons left Sri Lanka Army quarters in Diyatalava after completing the quarantine process today. They were residents of Kandy and Colombo areas. 63 persons who were directed for self-quarantining forces in Kegul have successfully completed the quarantine process. They were directed to the self-quarantining process for associating the virus infection person identified from Nelundani areas in Varakapala on March.